the Joe Rogan experience. There's got to be fitness in my fucking genes somewhere, man, because my mom's dad was a boxer. Mm. Like growing up, like a like a guy, and he had a record. He was Kid Dixie Schultz. Um, growing up, like in my grandmother's house, there's a picture of a guy like wow in that position with trunks, but old timey like. And um, I was like, "Who's that?" And she's like, "That's Grandpa." And he didn't look like Grandpa, so I never associated it. But he apparently he was a, a boxer. Well, like, that would in be the a ring, fun thing for you to do too. Ring. Not even box somebody, but have someone hit hold pads for you and you learn how to punch and hit pads because it's exciting it's fun to do it's like an interesting to thing batman. to do and you hit things like batman. batman that's how you sell it does yeah, batman man. hit pads he hits fucking you know injustice and oh crime. right 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 <laughs> shit like yeah. that um my boxer grandfather i want to see if if you agree with this theory. okay so you're the you've been the man in the ring so to speak um, you've been at the epicenter of attention of a thousand, five thousand, bunch of people as a man on stage. Um, even the man in the ring sometimes when you're doing a UFC event and stuff like that. Um, you know what it's like, the, the surge, the, the energy uh, that comes from like, I'm here and everybody's got, I got their attention and I command the fucking room. It's part of why we do what we do. My grandfather having been a boxer, must have felt that, right? Like fucking probably way more than I feel when I walk up on stage or or on the Reboot Roadshow tour. I'm like, oh, I feel clever sitting in the back watching the movie with the audience and hear him laugh. This is a guy who is like, I'm the man in the ring. And like, it's all up to me and my fists. And I could be a god or a goat tonight. And like, and then it becomes primal and there's pounding and shit like that. You would imagine there's a, if you got in the ring, and he pursued it enough to have a record, there must have been some sort of call, some sort of satisfaction to it all. Maybe. Um, it, 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 sometimes people do it for money, right? Maybe it this guy, would have no. been a way to make a living, no? This he guy, didn't? I don't, no, he, mm -hmm. he, I mean. You don't think he did it? I think he was hoping for purses, but I don't think it was just like this or mailman. Although, mm -hmm. although that's where the story's kind of going. Not mailman, but. This was a guy who boxed professionally. And the story was that my grandmother, like when they had their first kid, my Aunt Virginia, my grandmother was like, you can't be a boxer anymore. And so he was like, all right. And then he stopped being a boxer. And then my grandfather became a custodian in the Newark courthouse. And every day he would like get dressed up in a suit and take the bus to the Newark courthouse. They lived in a different section in Newark. And then he'd put on his custodian outfit and like clean the toilets, sweep the floors and stuff like that. Noble salt of the earth shit. So my whole life, I never questioned this. You know, your wife says you, you quit and you quit and stuff like that until I became older and I became something of the man in the ring myself. I know what it's like to stand, you know, at attention for everybody where everybody, you were the focus of, thousands where you get a level of affection from a from an of one vociferous mass that you is unparalleled from any amount of affection you could give from any other single human being in this world it is i've never done heroin but i imagine it's better than heroin it's one of the greatest drugs it, it fuels us and you know we obviously like it we keep fucking doing it we make money off <laughs> it yes but there's many ways to make money and we like it and we do it because there's power to it and it feels fantastic and you feel like, man, they like me, they really like me. And then I started thinking, why would he have put that all to the side? Like, how do you step outside all that just because your wife is like, I don't want you to do that anymore. And then it made me reconsider my grandparents and I figured out and I want to see if you back me on this play. You don't know these cats, so you got no skin in the game, mm -hmm. so you can't offend anybody. Doesn't that sound like she did dirty shit that nobody else did? In the bed, you mean? Yes. Son, where else but the bed? I didn't have that thought at all. No? My, my thought is that he recognized that it's very dangerous, and he probably knew people who died, 
and uh, he probably wanted to find a way out of it anyway, which most fighters do. Most fighters, at some point in time, they realize, I'm going to have to jump off this ride one day. I can't stay on this ride until I'm a dead man, until I'm 90 years old or 100 years old. It's not feasible. It's do- it doesn't exist. There's no 98-year-old boxers out there. You think there. he faced his own mortality? Every boxer does. Every fighter does. You you, you hit he someone and record. you see them like get 50, hurt. 50. Well, then he's probably been hurt. You see people get hurt. You see people get pummeled. You see people get knocked out. Maybe you've been knocked out yourself, and you realize that this is something that is unsustainable. And if he's not making any money at it, it's extremely dangerous. And you start, you know, you start thinking, what could happen to you? You know, what can happen to you it happens to people. You see it happen. If it hasn't happened to you, you watch it happen to other people. If you're around combat sports enough, you're going to see people get fucked up. And when you see people get fucked up, you realize like, hey, this is voluntary. There's other ways to make a living. I don't have to do this anymore. I can get off this ride. Or you're the type of person that doesn't give a fuck and you want to be a champion. And your your thought is you are here for glory. You are here for a legacy. You're here to leave your mark. You want to go down in history as a great. And if you don't feel that way, I tell people to get out. I think fighting is one of the most singular pursuits a person can get into yeah it's where like I don't you're think giving you're not only giving like the uh, uh, i'm dedicating myself to something yes. you're de- giving your body yeah something that like you're taught your entire life protect this it's also the the consequences are so grave the consequence zigging and zagging you you go r- the wrong way you run into a knee wrong way you run into a head kick wrong way you run into a punch you know, you, you duck into an uppercut, your fucking lights go out, you're laying on your back, they're got a flashlight in your face and ice on the back of your neck, and you, you don't even know what day it is, you don't know what, and then that, you never get back. And you can only get so many of those your life. You know, there's, it depends on the person, but you get knocked out three, four, five times, whatever the number is, mm-hmm. there's a certain number that your life is going to be fucking different now, because now your brain doesn't work good anymore. That's a fact. And maybe it'll get a little bit better over time. Maybe you can go through some cognitive therapy. There's some different things they're doing with magnets and different things they're doing with stem cells where they're shooting them straight into your uh, cerebral spinal fluid. And they think that that might have some sort of a positive impact on CTE. But, man, the, the reality is combat sports are a fucking brutal, brutal business. And um, so people, you think it's possible he just got to a place where yeah, he was he's like, probably smart. Like, I'm, this is my perfect excuse yeah, to not. Because he wasn't making any hurt. money doing it either, it sounds like. I got to tell you, he gave, me, he gave him his dignity back. I honestly was like, he gave it all up because she gave up the ass. <laughs> I she doubt was it. like a dirty German girl who was I just like, it. I will let you do the anal, but you've got to mm. get out of the ring. And he nah. was like, she was like, I'll give you one ring for the other. And he was like, fuck. God damn it, Gussie. He called her Gussie. I think Could it was you imagine more likely fucking love. like calling it was more somebody likely Gussie? love and family. No. Yeah. I knew these motherfuckers. Kids. Love? Kids. He's got a kid, right? He, they had they had a few. Uh, well, that when was he has a kid, one, man, yeah. everybody loves their kids, and you want to be around to see those kids grow up, and you don't want to be brain dead. And everybody, look, I personally know a lot of people that have combat sports induced brain damage. There's no doubt about it. No if ands Some or buts. CTE stuff. Yeah, that's why when I see anybody who's like half in, half out, I go fucking hard in the paint. I tell them, man, you got to get the fuck out of this now. You got to trust me, and, and you know, and I've done it to the point where people think I'm mean. And I'm like, look, I'm not mean about very many things in this life, but when it comes to people who are delusional about their abilities in combat sports or their future in combat sports, I get fucking mean because I think you got to know. You got to know with no uncertain terms. I, I, I can't be protective of your feelings. I have to go in hard because no one else is going to. People don't. They, they bullshit you. Coaches bullshit you. Trainers bullshit you. They tell you you got a chance. Promoters are willing to put you on fights when you really should retire. It, it is a, a dirty aspect of the business, and I don't, I don't play that shit. If I think that someone should get out, I go hard, and I, I, I tell them. And you know, I've done it to friends. I've done it to you know guys that I've done commentary for. They've asked me, and they pulled me aside, and I said, "You got to get out, man. You got to get out." Because you could talk right now. You're okay right now. But how, how, how many more shots can you take? How many more times can you get knocked out? One KO can change your whole fucking life. Meldrick Taylor got knocked out by Julio Cesar Chavez. And Meldrick Taylor was an Olympic gold medalist, a fantastic boxer, was fast as fuck, lightning fast combinations, beautiful skill. But Julio Cesar Chavez just kept wearing on him and wearing on him. And boom, he dropped him in the final round. 
And uh, they stopped the fight with like seconds to go in the fight. Richard Steele stopped the fight. It was a big controversy. Like, oh my God, how could he stop the fight? Meldrick was ahead in the scorecards. And, you know, there was only a couple seconds to go. And Meldrick would have won a decision. It was the right call because he was done after that fight, man. After that fight, he was never the same. You hear him talk today, it's the saddest shit in the world. He can barely put together a sentence. And he had a few fights after that against Terry Norris, who was a brutal knockout puncher, and a couple other guys. He just was never the same again. It was that one fight. One fight. One beating too much. And it just it all fell apart on him. And that can happen. That can happen to any fighter. And when you're done, you're done. And you... you, you the only way you should ever compete as a fighter is if it is, this is your fucking calling. This is the thing that you're obsessed with. It is your 100% focus. And as soon as it's not, as soon as you have doubts, get out. Because there's a bunch of people out there that don't have doubts. And I always try to tell people, like, think about Mike Tyson before he won the title. Think about the Mike Tyson that destroyed Marvis Frazier. Think about that motherfucker. That guy's all in. You don't ever want to face a guy who's all in when you're half-assing it. And a lot of people are half-assing it, and they don't even realize they're half-assing it. They just have this thing in their head, well, I'm training pretty hard. I'm doing good. I got good skills. I can beat this guy. But... When someone's in, they're in, and com uh, it's combat sports are uniquely dangerous in terms of the consequences of you not being committed. So you got to know when to get out, and no one does. Very few people. There's like a few guys. Andre Ward, retired, undefeated, Olympic gold medalist, two-division world champion. He's the rarest of the rare. Most guys, they keep going until they get fucked up. They keep going until they get knocked out, they get brutalized, and then you meet them afterwards, and they can barely talk, man. They can barely talk. I've seen so many guys that could just barely string words together. Everything's a mumble. All the words are slur into the next word. It's mm. horrible, man. And I saw it in the gym. I saw it in the gym with guys who never made it. They still got brain damage. The, the, the fucking the, the, the gods of combat sports, they don't give a fuck if you win a title. If you're eating shots, you take punches to the head, kicks to the head, you're getting fucked up, man. No matter it what. It seems like, why? How, how come they didn't talk about that for years and years? They didn't know. They did know that people get punched drunk, but they didn't know what was causing it. It's not even knockouts. It's it's subconcussive trauma that does the, the vast majority of the damage. They have a lot in the world of hockey yes. as well. Yeah, subconcussive trauma is terrible, but knockouts are also horrific. And then for me, my discussions with guys like Dr. Mark Gordon, who's an expert in traumatic brain injuries, and he works with a lot of soldiers, and he, he runs this TBI foundation to deal with injuries that soldiers and football players and fighters face. And his descriptions of it will scare the fucking shit out of you. I mean, he's like, he's like, people can get brain damage from fucking jet skiing. Just bang, bang, bang. All that bouncing up and down can get so you. So not even getting in a damage. jet ski accident, just like just jet skiing. And if you jet ski accidents, exacerbate. But he's talking about like people. Some people get in accidents. Uh, some sort of a uh, something happens to you. We get knocked out, and they are never the same again. This is a real thing. You can get. A shot to the head, a golf ball, somebody misses, they crack you in the head with a golf ball, right? You get hit with a line drive. Th th that kind of shit changes people forever, mm -hmm. forever. So your grandfather probably wanted out. Um, first, all right, some thoughts. Uh, number one, uh, sober, uh, sober October gives you a different Joe Rogan. Yeah? Oh, my God, you're so dialed in. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, I could, you're the Ken Burns of of uh, combat sports i can listen to you spin yarns tell tales um you know what that, that's unfair the ken burns i call you the gene shepherd of i don't know who that is but i hope he's awesome you love <laughs> gene shepherd remember christmas story <clears throat> yeah he's yeah. the guy that narrates christmas story oh, he okay. wrote the books the essays that it's all based on um my other thoughts um that is far more dignity than, than i ever afforded my grandfather i appreciate it my mom is going to appreciate that um, and then fourth, fuck, I lost my point, but I thought I hit enough of them. <laughs>